Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Custo query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the 13th session in the Custo query language beginner series. This series is intended to take you from a level with minimal technical experience to writing your first basic queries using the KQL language. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands-on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. In the last session, we had a debugging challenge. In today's session, we have part one of the end of the beginner series quizzes. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you wanna receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. To finish up the KQL beginner series, we'll have two quiz sessions to test your knowledge. Each problem will ask a true or false question. The goal is to examine the query and output and determine if the query answers the question or not. Just because you type a KQL query and it produces a result, it doesn't mean the result precisely answers the intended question. If you did well on the debugging challenge, and you do well on the two quizzes, it's an indication that you know the beginner material well and you're ready to move on to the intermediate series. If you find that you're missing a lot of questions or some of the material doesn't make sense, it's best to review either individual sessions or the entire series with a focus of getting hands-on practice in the free demo environments before moving on. Each problem will have a countdown timer of 15 seconds. If you need more time to review the question and study the query, pause the video as long as you need. Let's start with the first problem. This query will show results only if both the location is US and the error code does not equal zero. If we have two conditions and we want them both to be true for a record to display, we can either use two WHERE statements or an AND statement. In this example, an OR statement is used, which means if either are true, the record will display. The answer is false. Problem two. The output of this query will display four fields. In KQL, the order statements are made affects the output results. In this case, we're taking records from the sign-in table in the last seven days and projecting four fields. But the final distinct location will only produce one field with all the unique location values. In this case, the project line can be removed and the same result will occur. The answer is false. Problem three. This query will show the sign-in records for the last seven days. Time value options go up to days in KQL, but do not include weeks, months, or years. In this case, seven days is used and the answer is true. Problem four. This query has no errors and will produce a result. In KQL, some items require spaces and many do not. It's common practice to place new statements and conditions as well as new pipe statements on new lines, but it's not necessary. This query has no errors and will produce 10 random results. The answer is true. Problem five. The output of this query will be in alphabetic order from A to Z. Distinct produces unique values from the field or fields identified. Distinct does not sort the output. The answer is false. Problem six, the slash, space, and comma can all be used as a delimiter for use with has.
contains looks for strings and substrings within fields of a data set. The double equal represents an exact string match within a field of a data set. Has looks for either full strings or strings that have a delimiter to separate characters. Spaces, slashes, and commas are all valid delimiters that can be used by default with has. The answer is true. Problem seven. In KQL, equal followed by an exclamation point can be used to express something that is not equal to a value. While the exclamation point paired with the equal symbol together represents not equal to a value, the order matters and it should be reversed. The answer is false. Problem eight. This query will produce a record that's an exact match of the string Azure Purview. When we want to find an exact match of a value, we use the double equals. A single equals sets a variable. The answer is false. Problem nine. The following query will produce a match of the string, no matter the capitalization of any of the characters. The equal symbol paired with a tilde means the value in the string is not case sensitive. The answer is true. Problem 10. KQL is a WMRO, write many, read once language. KQL is considered a worm language, or write once, read many. You can query data sets without worrying about destroying the underlying data. The answer is false. Problem 11. The following query will produce the 10 most recent records. When we want to find the most recent records, we can use top and sort by the time generated field. Take produces 10 random records, and the answer is false. Problem 12. Between double equals, has, and contains, contains uses the most resources. The double equals is precise and finds exact matches. Has is slightly less precise since it looks for delimited substrings and uses more resources. Contains looks for all substring combination and uses the most resources of the three options. The answer is true. Problem 13. When using date time time values, there's only one standardized way to express the date. KQL allows you to use many different ways to express the date and time. Here are just a few options. The answer is false. Problem 14. The following query won't run because it has too many spaces before and. In many situations, such as the example provided, the number of spaces don't matter, and the query will run. The answer is false. Problem 15. The following query will produce records in the last week from the three fields listed. Get schemas used to understand the data type of each field. It will not produce records for the last seven days. The answer is false. That's the end of the quiz. How'd you do? If you missed zero or one problem, great work. You have a solid grasp of the fundamentals of KQL. If you miss between two to five problems, try to review the lessons on those topics until you have a solid understanding of the material. If you miss five or more problems, that's okay too. This is the initial stage of the learning process. 
it's best to review all the material with an emphasis on getting hands-on practice in the free demo environments. That's it for part one of the beginner series quiz. In the next video, we'll continue with part two of the quiz, which will be the last video in the KQL beginner series. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.